Welcome back to the channel, everyone, for today's video. We are going to be taking an in-depth look at the backgrounds and traits that you can choose in the character customization screen for Starfield. Now, this is obviously big. Um, for anybody that's into playing Bethesda games, they are going to understand how big the backgrounds and traits are for at least starting out and then getting into the game because you kind of know how you're going to play it, but you don't. And especially in this, this isn't like a, another uh, game in the Elder Scrolls world or another game in the Fallout world where you kind of already know how you want to play it. This is a whole new world and a whole new game. And so you kind of have to do a little bit of guess and check, you know, like you're going to have to just settle with one picket. And if you like it, great. If you don't, maybe you start over and redo everything at your character customization screen again through the, through the game. So for today, I kind of want to just run through a decent high overview, kind of quick look into the starting skills of each background and then the traits. So the backgrounds, first and foremost, you've got Beast Hunter to start. So again, that's going to be, and again, you can pause this video at any time uh, to take a look and read the paragraphs above. It gives you more of an, a description. But for the Beast Hunter, you have your fitness skill, your ballistic skill, your gastronomy skill. Kind of basically meaning you can, you can hunt down the beast and then make food and different, uh, uh, you know, different drinks and things like that out of it, out of the things you find. Uh, bouncer is your starting skills are going to be boxing, security, and fitness. As you see, it literally says you've worked the line at the toughest clubs in the settled systems in your background, you know, um, like with what happened back then in your past life kind of thing. So again, if you're into hand to hand combat, security and fitness, this would be a good one for you. Bounty hunter. This is more of the mobility for you and, it's, and and going over and finding wanted individuals, as it says in the in the paragraph. So this is gonna be piloting. So this is gonna give you obviously a starting skill. Now remember, this is like a quick note. These are all starting skills. So for anybody that's new to Bethesda games, these are starting skills that just give you a quick uh, boost of that skill in the beginning when, you, when you're about to start into the game. So, doesn't mean that you can't all of a sudden become great at piloting if you don't choose a starting skill of piloting in the beginning. It's just something to help you right in the beginning in that specific skill. So you've got piloting, targeting control systems, which is again is for your is for you know your ship using missile you know missile weapons missile using missile weapons, um, and then boost pack training, which is going to be great for personal mobility as it states. So like as you're running around your booster, you know like you're. Your, your boost pack actually is is uh, a little bit more efficient. Uh, for the chef background, gastronomy, as you saw in the Beast Hunter. Dueling, though, which is, again, they say, considered to be by many to be a lost art, close attacks with a melee weapon. So just better efficiency with a melee weapon. And then scavenging, which those are there are those who can find just about anything, and their success is usually dependent on knowing how and where to look. So you might be able to find better goods throughout the game. Uh, right in the beginning at least combat medic so usually as you know in different games other than Bethesda games even a medic normally is you know really well with the pistol as they have a small weapon on them of all times um, but no you know they're not going to be proficient in big weapons right off the bat uh, also medicine which is great and wellness which is added so you know uh, an overall sense an improvement of their, in their overall sense of health and they may even gain prolonged life expectancy. So a basic medic role for the game. The cyber runner is more of your stealthy approach. As you see, you have stealth, security, and theft. So if you're into that sort of thing, and that's one that kind of goes back to previous Bethesda games, where you can, you know, if you're into the stealthy theft version of yourself, this is one for you. So the cyber neticist, neticist. I'm terrible with words sometimes, leave me alone, but that's the name of it. You got your medicine skill that we've seen, security, and lasers. So the lasers is one that, you know, obviously is going to be specific to Starfield and the settled systems uh, world that they're in, obviously, because these are personal laser weapons um, that can be, uh, that their specialized training can greatly increase their effectiveness. So once you get into lasers, you may want to, maybe not off the right off the bat, be specialized in that skill. But maybe you'll use lasers a lot more in the game once you realize that you're into them. So it's not necessarily a starting skill you need, but one to think about. The diplomat is more of the leadership role, uh, more of the speech skill, you know, so you've got your persuasion, 
commerce. So it's, you know, obviously the right skill set can open and run a successful business. Um, and then the wellness of your own wellness being. So uh, more of that overall just leadership kind of role, if you want to think about it like that. Then you've got the Explorer, which I when I saw this list for the first time, I immediately went to this as, oh, I love exploring. Uh, that's like one of my favorite things in these big open world games. So again, the starting seal with the laser. So it's one that's like, okay, that's great. The astrodynamics is cool. Uh, as they say, um, you know, just more of that like research type that you'll be able to have more skill, what they call patience, you know, and a little bit of love to be able to get, you know, things going a little bit easier uh, in the astrodynamic piece. Kind of hard to explain, but you'll see when you kind of get into the game. And then the surveying piece. So obviously, as they say, the ability to decipher decipher all that data while on the ground has become an essential skill set. So the better ability right off the bat with a starting skill to survey, if that's what you think you're going to be doing a lot of in the beginning. Um, the gangster background. So specifically the shotgun certification. So as we have pistol, we now have shotgun. Uh, and like the ballistics one is more, you know, with just a wide range of normal you know, quote unquote weapons or guns and things like that. Shotgun certification is specifically for shotguns. Then you've got your boxing, which you saw the hand to hand combat and theft. So obviously they, you know, that that gangster role, pretty typical. Uh, the homesteader is one that I also really enjoy for people that are going to be exploring. Um, this is one of them on the top of my list that I was really considering. Uh, geology. So it says the newly discovered minerals mined from alien planets and moons have directly led to some incredible technological advancements. So better mining abilities, uh, surveying, which we've already gone over, and then weightlifting, which this is a big one for anybody that have played Fallout, Elder Scrolls, these other games from Bethesda that um, you can carry around more weapons and equipment. And But this is a big one because it's both in space and on the ground. So as a starting skill for anyone that hasn't been into a Bethesda game yet before, this just means that you have a bigger backpack, quote unquote, and specifically for in space and on the ground right off the bat, instead of earning it along the way, you start out with a little bit more, which is pretty legit. The industrialist, uh, again, persuasion, security, and then research methods. So it says by skillfully employing both new and time-tested methods, a researcher may complete projects faster and even gain unexpected insights. So you may gain insights, like it says, that others may not because you have a starting skill right off the bat. So when you start researching things, You'll learn things quicker and maybe more things that other people would not. The long hauler. So as they say, let those other hot-headed pilots obsess over laser weapons and maneuverability. You're a space trucker, pure and simple. You know, so you're a cargo person, as it says, the long hauler, you know. Um, you've got the weightlifting, which is great for both in space and on the ground. Then you've got the piloting and you've got the ballistic weapon system. So while there have been significant advancements in shipborne weaponry, Sometimes the most simplest tool is the most effective, you know? So um, more of a, like they say, you're the trucker in space, you know, with the cargo and everything. Pilgrim, so you've got scavenging, which is there are those who can find just about anything in their successes we've kind of gone over, you know? Uh, serving, so to help with the scavenging. And then gastronomy. So as a pilgrim, it's kind of like they're saying, you know, um, you know how to live correctly, right? So you know how to survey well, you know how to scavenge for, for things, and then you know how to utilize those resources to cook and feed yourself and things like that. Interesting, more if you're going for that um, that that original type of, um, you know, just living life as you go uh, right off the bat. So this is the professor skill. This goes over the research message with methods, which you've seen, geology, which we've seen, and the astrodynamics. So it's more of the very knowledgeable person um, in your group of people and to yourself, which is always useful. It's not going to be as much physical things, but more of a mental brain aspect for the professor. The Ronin, which is dueling, as we know, uh, as we've seen with the, the melee weapons, stealth and scavenging. So they say in the main description, masterless and unbound. You wandered the settled systems as a blade for hire, you know, so that a simple mercenary feel. So something you can consider. The sculptor, which is medicine, geology and persuasion. So we've seen these before, um, but you know, skilled steady hands and that you could be a surgeon kind of thing, you know, some to consider. The soldier, which is another one that was at the top of my list as one of those basic OG characters, right? Um, where it's a warfare, just a basic warfare. You're going out there, you're gonna be great with fitness, 
ballistics obviously is your just majority of high speed projectiles they say your weapons or guns and then boost pack training so you can get around easier it's it's a very good overall starting point for a lot of people is the soldier so something to consider this is the one that i actually chose i'm going to be doing in my playthrough here is the space scoundrel and just because this is for me personally the best option you've got your pistol certification so you know you'll be great with pistols which is, is awesome but you know you can work on the other weapons as well but start with a pistol because you usually start with easier weapons like that to have that starting skill would be great piloting so as soon as we start to learn you know and get into the game and you start to learn all about the ships and how to drive it and everything like that you'll already have a better skill set in driving which is great so you can avoid any any bad things going on in outer space things like that and then persuasion because speech in bethesda games leads to so many great things and so me with my background knowledge of how a lot of bethesda games work before getting into this i already know persuasion is already a big one for me so this is what i'm choosing personally as a space scoundrel but again it could work well for others and terrible for others so just consider that the xenobiologist where again it's the lasers so it's going to be like the personal laser weapon uh efficiency surveying as you've seen and then fitness to get around better you know that which means the increased lung capacity and everything like that and then the last one on this list being what they call file not found this is actually really cool um the paragraph is interesting you know they're basically saying there's no information on file about your past life you know for this one um you know uh, but it's great for wellness, which is awesome. Ballistics, which is, you know, again, those high speed projectiles or most guns and piloting. So it's kind of a mix. This is another one of those big overall pieces. Um, so something to consider. Again, just as an overview, I chose Space Scoundrel. But let me know in the comments below what you guys end up choosing and why. And if you do it again, you make a second character, you get into it again, you make another game and you choose something totally different. Why you did that and how it's ending up for you next then is the traits so the traits are all optional you don't need to do this some of them when you read through them you'll understand why they're optional and why a lot of people may not even choose any or you may choose one or two or even three um i've chose three to kind of go through why um i still haven't decided you know after this video i'm going to take my time and decide what i want to do for this first one uh, this first playthrough but um starts out alien dna so you volunteered for a controversial experiment that combines alien and human DNA. So what they say is that you start with increased health and oxygen. Again, these are starting things to help you out. So for people that are unfamiliar, again, with Bethesda games, background traits are, are to help you in the beginning, especially. So you start with increased health and oxygen, but healing and food items aren't as effective. Now, if that's a sacrifice you wanna take, which for me it is, because I would like to be able to get that, that simple boost of health and oxygen right out the gate, it, it's going to help for me, but it may be a drawback. So again, I may or may not decide to do this because again, it's all optional. Um, dream home. Interesting enough, you own a luxurious customizable house on a peaceful planet. Unfortunately, right off the bat, it comes with 125,000 credit mortgage with Gal Bank that has to be paid weekly. Sounds like a burden. I don't want to take over, so I didn't take that, but it sounds like a really cool idea. And if anybody does that, let me know how it ends up. Um, the empath route is actually really cool. One of those risk and reward situations. These are all risk and reward traits, but it's really cool. Um, performing actions your companion likes will result in a temporary increase in combat effectiveness. So if you're great with speech and you start to learn about your companion, this will help. But on the opposite side, like it says, performing actions they don't like will have the precise opposite effect. So it's actually gonna hurt you in combat effectiveness. One that I didn't feel like I needed, I can just kind of have it in the medium, you know? So. What this leads to next is the extrovert. Now, what you'll see when you read these paragraphs is that, or these descriptions, is that a lot of them can't be combined with others. So it makes sense why, but so for this one, exerting yourself as an extrovert uses less oxygen within, when adventuring with human companions, which is great, but it utilizes more oxygen when adventuring alone. For me, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing yet, right? And I don't know how I wanna, go about that maybe on a second playthrough or a different character i'll decide you know what with the knowledge i know now i didn't do a lot of uh exploring with people or i didn't do a lot of it alone exploring you know um so you can choose this one which also leads me to the real quick the introvert so it's the opposite exerting yourself uses less less oxygen when adventuring alone 
but more when adventuring with other human companions. Again, you may want to choose separately, but me, I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, adventuring with more or less uh, people or whatever, you know? So I decided to avoid those for now. So then you get into the faction allegiance traits, um, where there's a bunch on here that are related to faction allegiances, right? And so off the bat, I didn't do that because I don't know which one I'm going to go with yet. I haven't decided. You can technically, if you guys didn't know this yet, you can technically be a part of and go through each of them, each of the factions. Um, but I was just like, I'm not gonna, I'm not choosing one over the other right now. I'd rather, if I'm going to use traits, I'd rather use other ones. But again, you can pause now and read that if you'd like. Just a lot of, it's a lot of relation to, uh, you know, dialogue options, like it says. Better rewards from some of the missions if you're gonna go with this faction. Or on the flip side, the crime bounty towards other factions is greatly increased. So something to consider, right? So I didn't want to mess with the ins and outs and the statistics of all the stuff with factions because I haven't gotten into it yet, obviously. So the next one that I chose, which chose this for any of my followers, anybody that knows me, uh, Oblivion, so Elder Scrolls Oblivion is my favorite game of all time. Obviously my favorite Bethesda game. Um, when I saw, when we got, actually we got word member in the trailer from months back that the adoring fan was going to be back. I had like a personal almost tears of joy you know uh because it was hilarious to me it's amazing so adoring fan is back right so where all they do is you know they'll join your ship's crew and give you gifts and things and i love that so i'm of course i'm gonna add that in so for any of my other oblivion fans you gotta add it you gotta add it. it's gonna be a good time so then you got some weird stuff like this kid stuff one where they say your parents are alive and well and you can visit them at their home, which obviously in my mind means that it'll lead to better and different dialogue options, potentially rewards and things. But the flip side is that you will automatically send 2% of your credits home to them every week. One of those things that if you really are looking for different dialogue potentially, or maybe better rewards, in my opinion, just before getting into it, that could be a good thing or it won't be because you don't want to pay 2% of your credits, something I didn't really need to worry about. I just decided not to do it. So here we go with another faction allegiance. Now, what I want to show you also at the end of these is again, dialogue options, rewards, uh, crime bounty is going to be bad, right? So like to other factions, can't be combined with any other faction allegiance traits. So remember that. So if you've, if you've done some research while the game has already been out, like again, right now, the game is not released yet, uh, by the time that I'm making this video, um, to the public. So after you've looked at some videos, if you're taking your time after it's released and things like that, and you decide, you know, I would love to join this faction on my first playthrough. This is what I'm going to do. You know, if right off the bat and the first faction I'm going to play when I'm playing, um, go ahead, make sure that you get, you know, some benefits out of it. But if you don't know, like me, I'm just skipping all these. So again, a lot of this, the raise enlightenment, same situation, a little bit different though. So like you grew up as a member of the enlightened, you gain access to a special chest full of items in the, in the house of enlightened in new Atlantis, but lose access to the sanctum universum chest. Again, this is a religion trait though. Okay. So you can't combine it with any other religion traits. As you see, as, as they talked about here, the, another religion trait is the raised universal. You grew up as a member of the sanctum universum. Again, just kind of the opposite of what we just saw. You gain access to a special chest there, but you can't get access to the special chest in the other one. I don't know yet. So I decided not to do this as like a special trait to start with, right? Because I just don't know yet. Uh, here's a third religion trait you grew up worshiping the great serpent. So grab jumping provides a temporary boost to health and oxygen, but health and oxygen are lowered if you don't continue jumping regularly like an addiction. In other games, if you guys have ever played Fortnite and things like that or COD and stuff like that where you're jumping all the time, great but i don't want it to be like that i don't want a religion trait right now it's something that that's just me personally so then there's spaced which this one i'll show you uh with another one that again you can't be combined with your body has become acclimated to space so health and oxygen are increased when in space but decreased when on the surface the opposite of that is terra firma health and oxygen are increased when you're on the surface decrease when you're in space I was thinking about this one because personally, I know I'm going to be just exploring the surface probably more than exploring space itself. Like I'll be venturing different planets and, and wanting to explore them in depth. I was thinking of doing the terra firma, but I was like, you know, right off the bat, I don't know if I'm going to do it. So that leads me then to my third one that I chose. Again, I haven't decided if I'm going to officially 
officially do these yet or not, but the other one I enjoyed, it's a risk and reward again. Occasionally, if you have crew trained in a certain ship system, that system will automatically repair itself to full health whenever it is damaged below 50%. To me, to make the game easier right off the bat, that's huge, right? Especially if you're into, if you're, if you're gonna wanna focus on the exploration and not as much the ship and things like that, which some people are the total opposite of me. But for me, that sounds great. However, though, like it says, all crew costs twice as much to hire. I think it'll be okay, personally. I think it's one of those that, like, if I need to, you know, we, you know, there's obviously different ways to gain uh, currency in games like that that shouldn't be a problem. But if I can have that done for me automatically when it goes below 50%, it's huge. So that's one that I think I will keep. So with that, we got another faction one again. United Colonies. Dialogue options, better rewards, um, you know, but the crime bounty, you know, by other factions is greatly increased as we talked about. And then the last one being wanted, which is super interesting. Actually one that I feel people will choose more than I realize um, because it's different and it's more risk reward again. But someone put a price on your head and word has spread occasionally. Armed mercenaries will show up and try to kill you. So it makes the game super interesting, right? But being cornered gives you an edge when your health is low. So if you're getting, you know, totally ran over by these armed mercenaries, uh, when your health is low, you do extra damage, which is sick. Now, obviously that could mean in any situation as well, if your health is low, you do extra damage. It could help you in the beginning. It's another one of those traits that could help you. So again, I think if I do all three of my traits and I fill all the optional trait uh, pieces in, I'm thinking about doing Taskmaster. Hero Worshipped will definitely be on there because just nostalgia for me, I'm really excited about that. And then Alien DNA because I know it's one of those risk rewards, but for myself, I would love to start out with increased health and oxygen while I'm exploring right off the bat. So again, uh, thank you everyone. If you've made it this far into the video and you were interested in seeing the in-depth uh, look at the backgrounds and traits, again, thank you for joining me today on that. But I really am curious what you guys are looking forward to, meaning if you haven't played the game yet when you see this video, what ones are you thinking you're gonna do? And then come back or tell me when you guys do get into the game and you start playing, which ones you chose, which ones you like, which ones you don't. Leave me in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe and all those fun things here on YouTube. I appreciate you. Until next time.